You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, happy Victory Monday, folks. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. First Victory Monday of the season. Oh, it tastes so good. <laughs> So I'm, good. Kevin Kevin couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't <laughs> handle the smoke. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddy, Kyle, the coach Duggan. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. It's Kevin's on vacation, so yes. we're crossing our fingers. He'll pop in here at some point. Yes. But I think the vacation life with four kids may have tuckered that little boy out a little bit. He probably had one too many butter beers, and I'm hoping <laughs> that's the case, that he's just yep. on a sugar rush and just crashed. Crashed. Uh, yep. But if we can get him on here, trust me, folks, we will get him on here because we know how excited Kevin was. If you saw that instant oh, reaction, man. baby. If he fell asleep, he's going to be <laughs> so disappointed. Oh, oh, we just got a text. This he's just in. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Let's get him in here. Come on. Good. We we low key thought he was dead, so this is great. This is uh, yeah, really this is reassuring. <laughs> well, there he is. Hey, big guy. Oh, did you have oh. a big day at Universal? <laughs> it was a day <laughs> on vacation. I'm so out of shape. Like, <laughs> not in vacation shape. Went to one day at the park. I came home. Family laid down. Everyone's kind of quiet. First time I was quiet, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take a little nap. <laughs> Wake up like first day of Midnight. school, panic like. <laughs> Oh, f- where am I? <laughs> what am I yeah, supposed it, to be doing? It was right now? definitely one of those. So I'm glad I only missed a minute or so, and um, I'm here. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. There it we is. We did our folks. best to wait for you. We were like calling 911 to check if there Practically, was Practically, yes. Any, I was about ready to fly any, to like, Florida myself. Ride breakdowns oh. at Universal or something yeah, happened like bad. I'm searching and- Florida news for Kevin Duggan. Like <laughs> <laughs> something You're happened nothing. in the last two hours. The truth but. is, you can have too many butter beers, and it will put you to sleep. <laughs> that sugar it's, will hit you. Yeah, it is scientifically proven. But well, welcome, guess what, buddy. boys? That's right, Victory Dude, Brisket Monday. I went old school with the Jack Boys. I know it's just classic. Oh, I'm classic. not happy. Here's what happened: oh. my sons, <laughs> my two oldest sons, Paxton and Franklin, six and three, they started wearing my shirts to bed. It's like uh, we used to do it. We would wear dad's oh, shirts yeah. to bed and. So they started doing that. So now every night after their bath, they'll just run in my room and grab a shirt. Freaking Paxton grabbed my victory Mother. shirt. <laughs> hey. I didn't have it in him. I was all, I was, my fights were done for the day. I hit my quota. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. So I just let him wear it to bed. So right now he's upstairs wearing that beautiful shirt. He's well, victorious while sleeping, yeah. much as he's, I was hey, a few minutes he's ago. He's a Charger fan too. So he's, 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 wrapped he's in enjoying victory. that victory biscuit. Yeah. yeah. Atta boy. My, my man. All right, folks. Well, we've got a heck of an episode lined up for you. Lots to talk about. And uh, obviously, we've got the game to talk about. And since this was an away game, we've got ourselves a brisket abroad section and an ask. It's going to be be even better because it's a dummy. Oh, yeah. Where they're like really happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully Mary doesn't throw up. I'm actually hoping for it, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Run it back. (laughs) Run it back, baby. So let's start off here at the top. Um, all right. Chargers just won in Minnesota. First time in nearly 30 years. This is before our Super Bowl. Before yeah. we went to the Super Bowl, we haven't won in Minnesota. Since. Have not I'm, won in Minnesota since I'm, November 7th, <laughs> 1993. I'm glad I didn't see the stat before the game because I would have truly panicked. You yeah, know what I mean? I'd have been like, oh, great. Oh, this is all oh, oh, okay. Up, there's no way we would have won. That's no. an yeah. after the game fact. Yeah. Whoever had this fact, thank you for sitting on it, not mentioning it to me because I would have freaked out. (laughs) Thank you for not telling Kevin. Appreciate it. Um, All right. So, yes, the game, this game, this game that had to have taken 30 years off of everybody's life, uh, 28 to 24. uh, Boy, what a game. I mean, just the records and milestones achieved in this game. It's hard to even remember them all. I was watching to some random YouTube of like a, a talk show from this morning. Yeah. And they and they were like, oh, yeah. And Justin is the first one to ever have an 85 percent 
completion percentage with throwing yeah. 45 passes. I'm like, yeah. we're just like, it, there's so many records that were broken. I can't keep them. Can't keep the list straight. I mean, wow. just thank God we walked away with a win with all of these records being broken, because if not, those would oh. be the only things we'd be clinging to yeah, at this sure. point. And it would be a big fat mess, but Hey, we got the dub, folks. All yes, it was ugly. Yes, there were mistakes, but hey, we got we the freaking dub. We won. Yeah. Justin Herbert threw 40 freaking completions out of 47, <laughs> over 400 yards, three touchdowns, and QB number two, Keenan Allen, came in <laughs> and threw his own <laughs> completion for 49 Watch yards. Watch out, Stick. Watch yeah, out, buddy. Stick. Hey, don't, don't get comfy. No. <laughs> you better be in the freaking gym. I better see you working out and practicing. Yeah, Max uh, Duggan saw that pass and he's like, he's like oh, oh, come on. God, gotta call my agent. <laughs> How old is Keenan? How many yeah. years does he have left? Um, all right. So, yes, 405 passing yards for Justin Herbert, 49 for Keenan Allen. That's not a bad day for him. Uh, rushing wise, it was a little rough. Folks. Yeah, man. This wasn't a part uh, of the game plan. No. <laughs> they <Clearly. laughs> I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. They tried to run the ball on very specific moments in that game. Yeah. And that was, shouldn't have been part of the game plan. Yeah, should have nah. been part of the game. <laughs> we miss Austin's a lot. I think he's kind of whatever he's doing, he's making sure he's right, you know, not coming back before you know he's ready. Yes. He's kind of showing everybody, yeah, you kind of need me. You kind of need me around. So we're uh, hopefully pays he's to have a good running back. It does. It really does. <laughs> Not many people yes. willing to pay, but it does pay. So, yeah, Joshua Kelly had 11 carries for 12 yards. That's. That's, that's rough. Tough. That's a tough. That's not going to help your average. No, it's a tough day. Justin he barely had, he barely nudged out Justin. I know Justin rusher. was almost the lead rusher with two carries for 11 well, yards. That that's because of his kneel down. He had a minus one. So without that, he would have been the lead. Is rusher. that what it is? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, he had wow. he, his long his long run was 12 yards. He had two carries. His long was 12. Oh my! So God. That means his other one was the minus one for the uh. kneel. Oh Josh God. was like, take a knee, take a knee quick, take a no, knee no, right now. Justin, Justin's taking the knee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more step, please. Justin, just take one extra Do this step, for please. Me. <laughs> <laughs> just run backwards, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was crazy was we didn't see Dotson out there. We saw Isaiah Spiller, who came yeah. out and actually had two rushes for seven yards. He had a long of six. So, like, his longest was longer than Joshua Kelly. So, mm -hmm. it felt like. When I saw Isaiah Spiller go out there, like, okay, yeah, let's give a let's give it to this guy. And he got six yards on one of those rounds. It was like, all right, get, he's got the hot hand right now. Joshua yeah. Kelly couldn't get more than four. So I was surprised to see that they didn't give Spiller a few more touches. But hey, again, doesn't matter. We got yeah. the dub. It was just a get passing. The, I mean, the, 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 the Vikings had like seven or eight guys at the line of scrimmage on almost every single play. They blitzed so like, like a, 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 I want to say it was like 80 or 85% of the time, something like that. Yeah, they were just sending everybody. They should have changed the game plan because you threw for 400 yards. Um, but if you're going to throw for 400, you don't. That's just the game. And a lot of our completions were short screens or bubbles. or Those are just an extension of the run game. Those are mm -hmm. such high. Like, There's more of a chance of Justin fumbling a snap than not completing one of those passes. So it's like mm -hmm. sure. they're just so high, high percentage that it feels like an extension of the run game a little bit. So you could take probably 50, 60 yards of that, that passing and attribute to the rushing game. Mm -hmm. Well, on the receiving side, what a day. Seeing I mean, obviously we talked about one. Justin Herbert and the amount of sure. yards he threw. The yards. people he threw to, obviously number one was Keenan Allen, who had a record-breaking 18 Eight. receptions for <laughs> over 215 crap. yards. Longest was 25. And that and this was the game going into it that he only needed to get like 111. And people are like, I don't know, 111. Don't know. It might not Maybe be this game. Week. Maybe yeah. next week. It's like, hold Comes my ear. 215 <laughs> yards. Yeah. Yeah. Blows Lance Allworth's record right out of the water and is now the all-time receiver. For the Chargers, what what a day! That's really good. It again was so one fun more to watch. one more milestone to add to this. Like, thank God it was a win type yeah. game because that would have been a hard one to celebrate if we took home if we didn't take home the dub, but we did. 
folks. Yeah. I can't stress that enough for all of the people that are that get mad after dubs, yeah. ugly dubs. We got well, the then you, dub. You got to be happy over the last two weeks because we had ugly. We had we had pretty losses. So if you like, if you don't like the ugly win. Then you got to enjoy the pretty loss. Like you can't just be <laughs> negative about both. because Dude. the Dolphins was a pretty loss. All the stats was. Looked good, no turnovers. But so take your pick. I would yeah. just want dubs. I don't care if they're ugly, pretty. Give me them. Can I? Can I tell you something that happened? It was pretty awesome today. Please. Is that um, I didn't have my phone on me today. Oh wow. So so I didn't. <laughs> oh wow. I didn't take in. I don't know how Twitter feels. I don't know how anyone feels. Does it feel good? I I feel amazing. Good. Yeah. Because all like, you have is your feelings. How I felt about the game was like, we won. No one's <laughs> bringing me down. Yeah. No one's making me feel like anything's wrong. Right. And that's what I'm all about. So right. I was, if, if you're feeling ever down about it, it's probably because of who's who you're listening to yeah. yell. Yeah. So just you take note of that. Yeah. Know that the mute button is there for a reason. Um, or the delete X button. Or, or that one too. Hey, yeah. if you want to go that far. Go for it. But uh, yeah, as, as Kyle mentioned earlier, uh, Justin Herbert ends the day completing 40 of 47 passes. That's 85%. Ridiculous. The best single game completion percentage for any quarterback with at least 45 pass attempts in league history. <laughs> in the history, history of the, of the league, <laughs> folks. Yeah. Yeah, Justin <laughs> Herbert is not that good. Meh. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Social media quarterback. <laughs> Social media quarterback. Man. Well, dude, it's funny too because that stat is still absolutely real. If we hold them le- to less than twenty-seven points, so we went. We his his record is crazy. It held yeah. up. Held up yeah. to, to this game as well. Yeah, and the, you've got a, a graphic here that you put up with uh, Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes, where his completion percentage is at 65.5 comparatively to, to Herbert's. He's just better on pretty much every category than Patrick this Except year. Except interceptions. Yeah. No, he's better on interceptions. No, Patrick's better. No, I mean, that. but Patrick has more interceptions. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he wins in that regard. Yeah, yes. he wins. He has more. <laughs> he's got one extra touchdown, more interceptions, and rushed. A lot of his times. little turtle scooting rush attempts. That's about it. That's the only thing he's got going on this I, year. So. Oh, I put my pants. Rush attempts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Good old Keenan Allen, boy. What a game. Uh, ESPN pointed out that Allen's 18 receptions are the most in a game in Chargers history. He's also the first player in Chargers history with 15 receptions and 200 receiving yards in a game. So these weren't just little like five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards. Like there were some big catches Chunks. that Keenan Allen had in this yeah. game. He was chunky this week. Yeah. Chunk I mean, yards. <laughs> he was ex- he was Campbell's extra chunky. Mm-hmm. They should be reaching out to him mm-hmm. for a deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keenan Allen, here's some stats for his first three games, folks. Those of you that said, ah, Keenan Allen, he's old. Washed up. He's Why did the charge still have him around? Bad contract. <laughs> Come on. What are we paying this guy for? It's I'll tell all. you. Why. He's got <laughs> 39 targets. That's the most first in the league right now. 32 catches first in the league right now. 402 yards. Third in the league. Only to the one guy Tyree we played Kill. against, Justin yeah. Jefferson and Tyree Kill. And by Tyree Kill, it's only by like 10 yards. So he's putting up. The same amount of yards as Tyree Kill, folks. Just keep that in mind. 146 yards after catch, second in the league. Two touchdowns and 17 receiving first downs, which is fourth in the league. And I think the touchdowns, he's like tied for fifth in in the league. So He's on pace for like 2,000 yards this year. Can you imagine if this is like his (laughs) best season of his career? (laughs) Resign him right now. I can't. Yeah, I can. <laughs> can, can you close your eyes? Can you picture? Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, the way he's yeah. playing right now, would you want any other player on in this wide receiving core other no. than him next year? There's no I, one I, else. He's the most vital that we have on our team, I think, right now. Yeah. Just, just like the comfortability and his like favorite you, person to throw to. Mm-hmm. You listen to them in interviews talk about each other. It's like that they love brand each new other. crush. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's like you just started dating and you're so excited about each other, and you just call and you talk on the phone all night and. <laughs> You just yeah. don't say anything. You just listen to each other breathe. Like, that's what's happening. That's what these post-game pressers sound like. 
I just imagine it's like silence, just silence. To each other. <laughs> I just imagine silence on the phone, and then you just hear like little tap of the ivories, and you know he starts Keenan oh, starts, starts serenading <laughs> Justin to sleep. Oh, go to bed, sweet prince. Go to bed, sweetie. It's okay, it's late. Justin, 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 <laughs> Give me that track. <laughs> Give me that track, <laughs> please. <laughs> um. All right. Well, with Keenan right, Allen having face, yeah, time to time to bring it time to bring it down, folks. Because uh, we did see Mike Williams have himself a great game as well. Seven receptions, over 121 yards, and a touchdown from Keenan Allen, which was just just awesome to see the play happen. Because as money it, well spent. As it unfolds, you see Justin Herbert take the ball. He throws it backwards to Keenan Allen. And I'm just like, oh, God. Like, sometimes when they, those receivers catch the ball back, it's just like, okay, these defenders are going to come and cream too him. fast. Yeah. And it worked perfectly because the defenders came off of Mike Williams, leaving him wide open. Keenan Allen, as we know, this isn't his first throw that he's ever made. He threw one to Justin Herbert, not, what, two years ago, like in yeah. his rookie season? So... We know he can throw the ball, and sure enough, he throws it, gives it to Mike, who's there with Palmer to like blocking case, yeah. but wasn't necessary. They just, like, held hands and they just into strolled the into the end zone. <laughs> Mike Williams threw up the deuces, and oh, what a brilliant! I just, I just remember Mark Sanchez calling the game. He's like, "Oh, it's coming!" He just gets so excited. Goes, oh, it's coming. you remember that? He just gets I don't, so. I need to rewatch. You re-listen to Mark Sanchez. He gets so giddy. He totally breaks down being a commentator. He's like, "Oh, it's coming! It's coming! It's just Matt, oh, Matt, here we go." Matt money does it. Matt Money Smith does the same thing because from does up he? high, you can see that it's like an obvious, like deliberate backwards pass where he gets too deep. Yeah. Matt Money Smith's like, this is a double pass. No, he calls it a flea flicker. He's like, it's a flea flicker. It's a flea flicker. <laughs> and then he it's a flea flicker. It's a flea flicker. He's like, oh, it's not a flea flicker. It's a double pass, but it's still a touchdown. Well, it was an absolutely amazing catch uh, for this young man to make. And sadly, we saw him get hit. We saw him go down. They had to cart him off, which is never a good sign. He had the towel over his head, never a good sign. And turns out that he did tear his ACL and he is out for the season. The pro, it's like previous years, if this were to happen right now, I would have been like, all right, well, there it is. There it is. You know, with what we have with our coordinator, Kellen Moore, every week so far, he has game plan and got it done. Mm-hmm. with different people and it's the year where we drafted Quentin mm-hmm. so this is kind of that that Justin story where you're kind of thrust in before you might be fully ready Great um, but it's time to go and well, coach, we all we all need you Quentin yeah yeah coach came out today and he said um, Quentin's not he hasn't been like not seeing the field because of a lack of talent he's yeah. just stuck in a really deep wide receiver room yeah like that's just the bottom line is He's not as good as Mike Williams, so that's why he's not been on the field a lot. Mm-hmm. Now we get to see what that talent looks like and hopefully an opportunity for him to step up and make a bunch of big plays. Now it's heartbreaking for Mike. Like, that's so tough. That is so tough. Love it's Mike so Williams. Sad. Like, yeah, and last year, the way that the season ended with his neck and he rehabbed and came back, was playing good, and now he's out for a whole another season. Now that's the majority of two seasons that he's missed in a row. Yeah. Um, with twenty million dollars on the on the books, it's like that's hard. Like that sucks for that's us rough. to look yeah. at, but it's as a player too. Like he's a person. He's like, wow, he's this still team a human invested being. a lot in me, and yeah, I'm not producing for them. That sucks. That's right. This is a guy so, that comes ah, out and wants to play, wants to win, wants to compete, yeah. wants to do. Decided right. to stay with us too, yeah. like in free agency. Anyone that signs that second contract, I don't know. Like he could have gotten similar money somewhere else. Right. It's not like the NBA where if you stay with your team, you have the opportunity to make more money. That's not how it is in the NFL. He could have gone anywhere else. He wanted to be here. We drafted him. When you get drafted, you have to go play for that team unless you're Eli Manning and you're a big baby. But you get drafted, you have to play for that team. Yes. That second contract, that's a choice. He wanted to be a Charger. So yeah. it's just it's it's a bummer. It's sucky. Just it terrible. Is. And and just just a, they had that one catch. It was, it kind of went under the radar, but it was like the first down where they challenged it, where he like really like yeah, went f- under reached the around the guy oh, yeah. like yeah. on the ground. Like we're gonna we're those are gone. 
Um, yeah, the, those he's been so clutch for so long and really dialed it up there. We're just gonna need somebody else to step up. Jalen Guyton's supposed to come back here pretty soon, so well, it's gonna be all hands on well, deck. Well, you got to hear what we this, did here today. That's Kev. right. Breaking so news. This is breaking news, folks. Normally, news drops after we record. This drops Always. the like minutes before May, we. You start know what? Wait, what are you, you know talking? What, what are you talking? You know about? what happened? The, we faked out the news. Kevin went to sleep. <laughs> The news, <laughs> the football world thought the Chargers chat podcast wasn't happening or it was already so, done. They're like, RK, go, 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 go. So <laughs> here's, go, go, go. So here's the news, Kevin. I'm going to see if you can guess. All right. The Chargers did sign somebody to the 53-man roster, a wide receiver from another team's practice squad. Now, when you, when, when you realize the name, it's going to be like, what? What? Like, not in a disappointed way but just in a strange turn of events kind of way now this person that we signed as a wide receiver is related to a previous charger player recently departed recently departed they share the same last name I have not, dude. It's just, he was a favorite. I'm so tired. I have, <laughs> you my brain is him. not working any Who, think of a player you interviewed old trivia think Who of a player you interviewed that was year? a fan favorite yeah, we loved him. We wanted him to play out so bad. We wanted him back really bad. Fahoko? He decided to go somewhere. Uh-huh. Who's Fahoko's cousin? You don't know. It's okay. I didn't no know. No idea. Simi yeah. Fahoko. Simi Fahoko. Okay. Wide receiver. Okay. Wide receiver. Stanford, played with the Cowboys. He was on the Steelers practice squad. Which we is wild. Signed him to our that you had Fahoko and roster. Fahoko on the same team. Well, we're going to have to run this back. I'm going to have to get another Fahoko <laughs> interview if that's the case. <laughs> That's awesome. Run this back. Yeah. yeah, it just dropped. It just he yep. posted it on his TikTok that he was on a layover at an airport and that the Chargers had recently signed him to the fifty three because that's the he deal. literally he had literally just gotten to Pittsburgh a couple of days ago, something like that. Yeah, and this is a Kellen Moore connection. Clearly, he was on the Cowboys. Yeah, he was with yes. the Cowboys. Yeah, yes, exactly. he was drafted by the Cowboys. Played with them. Got injured, and they let him go. Pittsburgh he just signed, signed practice squad yeah. with the Steelers, and then we we signed him to our to roster. Like, had to you have because to, to take him off the practice the, the practice squad. You have to sign him. To your so that roster. makes sense. Jalen's not ready. He'll maybe after the bye, we'll see how that shakes out. But he's he's coming into play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this week Raider week. Well, there's a game on Sunday. Oh my God, it's Raider. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So finally, the cool. Charger chat gets to talk about something before anybody else gets to talk about it. Actually, this will it. probably everybody else will probably be talking about it. But yeah. comes out. Uh, but still, so, we okay. just found out in real time in, on time. Yeah. Yes, breaking Monday night news. Let's go. That's right, Simi Fahoko, newest wide receiver for the Chargers. Um, but going back to the game, uh, one of the bright spots from the rookie class that we just recently signed is our very own Tuli Tui Palatu. He's the who guy. had himself a game. Stud. What an absolute stud. The guy playing, I mean, it was him and Bosa like double did you see on them? the same side. Wait, so did excited. You see that celebration? Oh, after how could you song? not? That that was literally <laughs> like, Joey Joey with the sword like <laughs> knighting him. That was that yeah. that moment. And that it was, was like, like all right. You can come sit hug. with us at lunch. You can hang it out officially like with a, us. Yeah, you can come sit with us at lunch type of deal. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it reminded me of uh, the program. Who were those two knuckleheads in the program? Max and Lattimore. And, uh, Lattimore. 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 And that Max. reminded me of that because they were just so amped and so pumped. I mean, they, were they might have actually yeah. spit in each other's mouths. I was going to say, slow it was, it down. they were yeah. seconds away you from you it. If, down enough? Yeah, they would. <laughs> there was some spittle flying for sure. But uh, Thule, uh had... I, I, is this like a record single single game? Yeah. Most pressures by a rookie since 2016. Yeah, most pressures by a rookie since 2016. Uh, Tuli is holding now the second place, uh, tied with uh, is that Jalen Phillips? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with ten pressures. So this tied for the second most by a rookie since 2016. And only one yeah. person ahead of him, and he's the brother of the he's guy the that was of- spitting in his mouth. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Slow slow down the tape. Up and to the yeah. left. Down and to the left. 
<laughs> so awesome that day. Hey, Thule's coming out there and boy, making his presence known. I love, love it, that. Good, 21 years old, just like... He, it, hey. it clearly this wasn't like a college because sometimes you'll get college players who like you look great in their whatever their scheme mm-hmm. is whatever their div- conference is whatever 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 he looks he's ready he's ready for this and the fact that they're just gonna have to start turning him up and playing him a lot more than maybe they had planned to do originally with that you know that Joey last week being on you know limited snap count opened this opportunity for Thule mm-hmm and then let's see what happens with this wide receiver room. I think this is just a year of like anointing new, you know, brethren, mm-hmm. battle partners. So it'll be cool. <laughs> I mean, partners. and he's young too. Like he just turned 21. Yeah. He's, he's out there he's performing baby. like a madman. God. Love awesome. it. Awesome. Well, uh, one of the things that surprised us prior to the game even starting was finding out that JC Jackson was not, not even going to dress for the game. Yeah. He was a healthy scratch. He was inactive for the game and made us uh, the entire fan base go why? Where do you where do you, what do you think's happening right now? Well, uh I saw that uh Brandon Staley initially had said that uh, it was during the game cuz uh, one of the one of the people on the sideline interviewed him and he said, you know, we felt like this was the right matchup for, you know, the cornerbacks that we have out there, it's the right matchup for for this team. And then Later on, there was another interview. It might have been the post game post game interview talking yeah. about it, where he said that uh, you basically need, you need to prove yourself that you that you should be out there on the field, and it's oh, on a weekly basis. I love this stuff. Yeah, I, I I'll love have it. to find the quote because <laughs> but coaching. it was essentially that. Yeah, yeah. this Dude, is, this good is coaching. coaching. I was just talking to you guys last week about how when JC had that bonehead move, Staley didn't go over there and rip him a new one. He just mm-hmm. gave him a pat on the back like, I know, you'd made a mistake. You won't do it again. No, you're inactive, bud. Like, mm-hmm. you have too many mistakes. You're not playing. Yeah, I love it. Unless this is just a result of the later news that came out after the game. Correct, yes. There was also news that came out that a new arrest warrant has been issued for J.C. Jackson in Massachusetts. Uh, the Chargers cornerback was due in Attleboro District Court on Friday for a probation violation, but did not appear. Now he's dealing with a straight warrant. So uh, this is based off of the prior. Th- he's not playing. Yeah, but this is also something that came up previously in the off season that yeah there was there was in and he turned himself in. I think if I remember correctly, he turned himself in because there. <sighs> That's was, a whole separate incident. Well, it's. Oh yeah, no, tw- this, right. this, this arrest, this warrant is from a 2021 speeding violation that he was going way yeah, too the fast other one when was he like, played uh, for the Patriots. This was a domestic violence type of deal. Now I think that's the last one. Yeah, that, I think that was this this last off season. My, I got a question. You know, <laughs> Chargers are pretty. Throw, wait, I got a question. Maybe I'm a we simple man. I got a simple domestic, question. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I shouldn't throw around domestic violence cases without. Confirming that that's what it was. Yeah, maybe you look into that. I got a little. I got a. I, I'm gonna take a little time. I have a little something to say. It gives okay, you enough go. time to look yeah. at, do some research. Yeah. So the Chargers are pretty smart, right? So like, I'd imagine the lawyers on the back end that are working out these really long, detailed contracts. Yeah. Might put a man. A man. You know, so, there's an amendment. Amendum. Amendum. What is that? Is an, an, an amendment. No, I don't Addendum? Know, Addendum. There's something in that contract. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm still speaking up. There, there's something in that contract where if something like this happens, what happens to that money you're owed? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, no, I, for sure. No, if you're arrested, I'm I'm positive. There's well, There has to be a positive. clause. I'm of about eighty five percent sure there's, there's something in you're there. not getting paid. Yeah. yeah. So what well, is like that? The, the the receiver for the the Raiders, they're not paying that first round pick rugs. We're not paying him money while he's in jail. No. So it, there's there's definitely those in there, yeah. I'm just curious what well, how this is going to play out because he has not worked out. On, let's just be honest. Like, mm-hmm. up until yeah. he got hurt last year, was Nothing. not playing well. Have we? I don't think we've won a game that he's played in. And most of those games were, you know, big glaring issues with that, that player in, in that game. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to give up on him yet. I'm just saying... Well... <laughs> I just it's it seems like a big old a big old miss like a, a whiff yeah. for sure. 
Yeah. So, so okay. So to clarify my comments, it says I found an old statement, 2022. This was last year during season. Remember when he was hurt after he was mm-hmm. hurt. It says Chargers cornerback JC Jackson booked for nonviolent family issue. That's right. Sheriff's yeah. office says. So it was something to do with his family, but this is not related to what he's now has a warrant out for. Correct. So separate. So <sighs> yikes. It, yikes. I mean, that's all you can say for for that. And uh hopefully. But he's not he's not Raider Week. We we do we do not have him. He's no, he has playing. to go back that's to a, Massachusetts and deal right, with all yeah. this warrant that's out for his arrest right now. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. It's a wild, it's a wild news story, but uh, again, this is off of coming off of a W. What a game, ugly game, but a win. I mean, we're and on the defensive the side, wins. we saw some sacks. We saw K nine come out there and put the game away with that that leap, like the pull forward interception. Yeah. Let me get the ball, and uh, awesome, chef's, oh, kiss. chef's kiss, chef's kiss for sure. Amen. And we want to chef's kiss everybody that's over at Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash charger chat. Uh, you can go on over there, folks. Check out all the funny vids. We put one up every week, if not more. Sometimes we put up more. Sometimes funny things happen and we don't expect it. And we just put it up whenever. Yeah, so whenever. go whenever. whenever all willy like. nilly. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So hey, most, of the time you, most of the time you're texting us like, are you guys okay? If I Is it okay if thing? I put this up? Well, you look like an absolute we were kind of silly. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead. It's Patreon. <laughs> so if you want to see us being silly, go to patreon.com slash charge chat. And if you don't want to go over there, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other charge chat tiers in the member section and ask questions in Ask Ball Fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? It's a good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash charger chat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Now back to the show. All right, gang, it's time for the next segment. This is the first dub of the season, which means this is the first dub version of Brisket Abroads. Let's go. I'm ready. Me too. One, two, one, two, three. Well, there's no place they wouldn't try to hang out with Justin and his squad. Get ready to hear their positive thoughts. It's time for Brisket Abroad. <laughs> you guys, you did it. You did it. <laughs> you wore the things you were 
were supposed to have been wearing this whole time. Uh, and so then we finally won. Finally. <laughs> Kevin, you had on your knee-high socks. Kyle, you finally put a real jersey on, even though the vest is pretty freaking so cool. awesome. So, but maybe just wear those on the off days, I guess. And Adam, you got that kilt out of the hamper. You redeemed it. And it's back on the leaderboard, baby. <laughs> we finally get to wear these beautiful shirts, yeah. courtesy of Pablo. They just feel so soft, so good. They're going to get so faded because we're going to be wearing them every Monday from here on out. That's true. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, so we better get cracking. We were traveling from Mississippi for this away game because we were hanging out with Mary's family. So our travel day started quite early. We woke up at 3 a.m. To drive to Memphis. To fly to Philadelphia. Zoom! Whoosh! Whoa! We missed our connecting flight, and then we were told we had to fly to Dallas. We were like, no thanks. So instead we flew to Chicago. Chicago. And then we had a three-hour layover, so we watched Oregon annihilate Deion Sanders. And then we flew to Minneapolis. Oh, already still landing gear. Wow. Hmm. What an easy journey. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to arrive in Minneapolis at 2 p.m. Instead, we arrived at 9 p.m. We should also mention that in Philadelphia, we got to hang out at a pretty cool pub. Oh my gosh, Duggan. Oh my gosh, they named a restaurant after Max Duggan. Yeah, little known fact, Jack is actually a shortened nickname version of Max. Yeah. <laughs> in many cultures. On the game day. We didn't make it to the tail great in the morning because we were so tail late getting in the night before. So we thought it'd probably be better to get our rest. The tailgate started at 7 a.m. There was no way in. <laughs> Hell's bells that that was happening. <laughs> so anyways, morning of the game. We're in the elevator shooting some sweet footage for our brisket abroad segment. When this happens. Whoa, whoa. Ah, who's that? Who's oh, that? Going down. Oh, no. no. Oh, my gosh. Can we get a picture? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Enemies just coming into our elevator. And on our turf. Yeah, this is our place. We're filming mirror footage. Get out of here. <laughs> Naturally, we challenge them to an arm wrestling match. <laughs> you ready? Wait, who's going to call it in? Three, two, one, go. Oh, my God, you're so strong. Oh, Jesus, you're so strong. Go. Oh, sorry. Good job. <laughs> good game. That was good. good game. That was good. <laughs> All right, Justin, be merry. Three, two, one, go. Remember, she's a little girl, Justin. Don't hurt her feelings. <laughs> oh my gosh, another victory for the Vikings. <laughs> I can't believe I lost. She was really strong. I don't know why I thought I had a chance. But it's okay because <laughs> we won the game. <laughs> yeah. Then we gave some fellow Bolt fam directions. Now there's some good looking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know, know where the stadium is? Uh, oh, we are gonna start walking. I think it's this way. It turned out that directions to the stadium were way easier than we thought, because once you just went outside, you could see the stadium like it was literally down the street. It's there. <laughs> there it is. Uh. So we all walked over there. Scary! So what was your opinion of U.S. Bank Stadium's outward appearance? When I was far away, it was not a good opinion because it kind of looked scary. But then once we got close and we saw all the cool stuff outside, I friggin' loved it. I thought 
that it looked like the spaceship from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 that just like plants down. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I can't even remember what the spaceship from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 actually looked like, but the vibe was the same. It looked like he was Bank Stadium. Yeah, I was like, this is a foreign thing. You definitely wouldn't think it was a stadium. Mm. Like, looking at it, you're not like, oh, I bet football happens inside there. What, do you, what would you think happens inside there? Torture. <laughs> but the fans are super great, so... They were the best. The vibe of the yeah. outside of the stadium doesn't match the vibe of the fans. Then we walked into the stadium. What were your impressions of the inside of the stadium? It was nice and like actually clean. It was quite clean. They had a lot of different food options to choose from. Here are some of them. What the heck is pizza pothole? Was that what it was called? I can't remember. <laughs> of all the food places, Mary was drawn to... Oh my gosh, Cheetos popcorn! Is that what you want? Yes. <laughs> Cheetos popcorn. Yum. That's what she wanted to eat. That's what sounded good to me. And then we decided to get Rusty's Tacos. They had a trio of tacos, steak, chicken, and pork. <laughs> Surprisingly, Minnesota didn't have great Mexican food. <laughs> Shocking. With the tacos, I also got a blue Gatorade, and they took my cap. I got pissed on once, I guess. Oh my God. Not allowed to have lids. Yeah. Safety purposes. They said that it was dangerous. The caps were dangerous. And I asked them to explain. <laughs> and they said, because people throw them. And then I thought, couldn't people also throw this bottle of Gatorade? Like, why are you taking this cap from me? I wanted to put it in my bag, and now I have to walk around with this open container. All you're doing is making it harder for me to carry all of my stuff. <laughs> so we took our food and open Gatorade bottles and made our way down to our front row seats. There's no place better to sit at a game than the front row, am I right? That's right. <laughs> we got to see the boys warming up. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be awesome! <laughs> Guys, you won't believe who we saw on the sidelines. Who's that? I wish we had that picture of him. Yeah, why don't we bring it? You know that face. <laughs> you know this! <gasps> It's John Spanos. <gasps> and he looked and waved to us. I think he's seen the Broadbolt trivia segment. I think he's a big fan. He saw it and he loved it. And you know who <laughs> else we saw? John Leo! John Leo! John Leo! The warm-up also featured something that we all love more than life itself. Mm. Justin Herbert hugging people. Yeah, it's the best. Look at that. Huh. We sat next to a freaking awesome dude whose name was, you guessed it, Adam! Adam. Once we heard that, we're like, okay, mm. this guy's legit. Here is Adam's origin story of how he became a Chargers fan. I was born in South Dakota, but I was a young child who didn't know shit about Quack. playing Madden. 
it said SZ and there was a lightning bolt next to it. We get crazy thunderstorms out there, right? Oh. And so, oh, so, so South Dakota. South Dakota Chargers. Yeah. Life of pain and suffering and love. Yeah. Fun, it's fun, fun football. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. I hope you like it. That was, that was probably one of the best origin stories yeah. I've heard. Our friend Amanda's boyfriend was at the game. <laughs> And we kept our word and did not even ogle him. <laughs> oh, wait, we did not keep our word. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. Thank gosh, you're so bad. <laughs> there was so much dancing at this game. I just wanna dance. <laughs> Cameron is probably the biggest dancer on that team. And then he perfectly kicked the ball in sync with the music. Look at this. <laughs> That's our kicker. We said hey to Alohi, and he said hey back. I guess now's a good time to talk about the Vikings fans and like their whole vibe and what they got going on in the stadium. What, what did you think about their whole vibe? I loved it. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. I felt like they really did the Viking thing right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Woo! You look great, kid! <laughs> Where's it at? <laughs> like, I believe, like, that Viking could kill a 10,000 pound shark. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Don't bring that up. Okay. Their cheerleaders could use a little work. <laughs> they were, like, really out of sync. And, like, so short. <laughs> they have that cool big drum and then a guy pounding on it. And there's a reason why the Vikings used that back in the day when they were going into battle, because, man, it gets you pumped. I'm ready to do murder. <laughs> dong, dong, dong. And then the skull chant. So cool. Loved it. I just love that so much. I was like, you guys are all gonna lose. <laughs> just kidding. It was a really close game. They have this funny little song that they play after they score points that was like written in the 1950s. <laughs> There's nothing that gets you pumped like a song your great grandparents wrote in the 1950s, am I right? Yeah, they they really wrote a lot of bangers back then. They're like, sock em, sock em, sock em. <laughs> Why I oughta? Oh, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna give you a noogie. <laughs> yeah, kind of loved it though. It was great. <laughs> and then the Vikings players ran out of the Viking ship. Anyways, skull. <laughs> and then it was game time. Baby! We just want to be like Adam. Our little corner of the end zone was freaking the happening corner Ooh. of the Ooh. end zone. So good. Keenan. We also witnessed some glorious defensive moments. Please enjoy. 
enjoy our reaction to Justin Herbert throwing the ball to Keenan Allen, who threw the ball to Mike Williams. <laughs> My dad was like, see if the coaches on the Vikings had done their research and watched your training camp video, they would know that Keenan Allen was a threat with the ball. He's QB number two. I'm open. And then we had front row seats to that friggin' nail biter of an ending. Holy freaking cow. So naturally, when we won this game, we thought two five equal a 10, baby. We're gonna get a Justin high five! Justin high five! What the heck? What the heck? Justin didn't come and high five us. Hmm. But we're pretty sure it was because he had to go to the bathroom. He probably did. He had to he, go to the bathroom. He had to chug his Gatorade because they took the cap away from him. So he had to pee that whole game. Oh my gosh. But you know who we did get a high five from? <gasps> Alohi crew, baby! Every victory comes with sacrifices, and we we had a big sacrifice in this game. We'll let Adam explain what happened. Hey, I'm really sorry for dropping one of your trumpets down that crack, but at least uh, it's here forever. A relic of God of Thor left here! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> That's right! Yeah, so there was like a slit by our seats, and I guess... Adam had just set the trumpet there and it slipped right through, like Boop. fully down. There Under was the bleachers. no way to get in there. But he made a great point. We have forever staked our claim yeah. on the U.S. Bank Stadium. There is a charger trumpet beneath the bleachers there saying that the god of thunder did done thunder down under. <laughs> Outside the stadium, the celebrating continued. Oh, no way. Oh, oh my god. Marissa with the Yeti or not Lil Herbie. Mm -hmm. We were fully loaded on Lil Herbies out there. This gentleman was as bolted up as you can get. That's bolted up right there! From head to underwear to toe! That's amazing. You're amazing. Where do I get me a pair of those? I don't know if that was completely appropriate to be showing off his knickers in public. And then we stopped by our hotel and we changed into our victory shirts. And then Davis, the bike rickshaw man, pulled up and he's like, hey, can I help you? And I was like, yeah. And then we're like, we need to make a pit stop. We picked up Adam! Our new best friend! Here he is! <laughs> we're like, come on, we're getting victory brisket. And he was like, can you give me five minutes? And I was like, no. We're downstairs right now in this bike rickshaw. You come out right now. And when we say that this bike rickshaw was lit, it was lit. I am I don't know the song. I will figure you it out. Know? Oh, yeah. This is the song. Please enjoy Adam singing Supercharger as if he were Bob Dylan. <laughs> Yeah. We're coming your way. We're down to dazzle you with our play. And then Adam singing Supercharger as if he were Johnny Cash. Supercharger. <laughs> 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 
San Diego <laughs> Chargers. <laughs> Adamses are just good at voices. Yeah, what's mm -hmm. the deal, Adams? Yeah. We went to Storm King Booze Beer Barbecue. Ah! Danielle and Brad also joined us mm -hmm. for Victory Brisket. So it was a freaking party. I know that was a thing, but we are. Just Wait, they're telling me I get the Billings. You're the Billings lady. You know I am. You're the Billings lady. Yeah. I, uh, maybe Wendy, I, uh, when do I get recognized? Yeah. Over yeah. Over All the time. Yeah. How old is she? She's nine. Oh, okay. You take the. Oh my God, I'm so good. She's starting to. She doesn't really understand quite yet. She loves her. The brisket was great. And then Adam shared with us his theory on what we termed the Thunder Hex. We'll let him explain. The Thunder Hex, let me tell you about it. Going back to the dawn of the Super Bowl era, if a team makes it to the Super Bowl and have played the Chargers in the regular season, and if they lose the Chargers in the regular season and they make it the Super Bowl, they lose the Super Bowl. This has happened 11 times. Wow. I hate to say it, but that's just history. And I got the, I got the light work. It's all right here. It's all right here. I, ha I have my work right here, right here. And it goes all the way back to 1980. Check the work. Wow. Check the work. <laughs> I think there might be something to it. Yeah. So if we go to the Super Bowl and we're playing someone that we also happen to beat this season, we will know 100% yeah. that we're winning. And then we saw Mark Wahlberg. Is Mark Wahlberg from Minneapolis? <laughs> I don't think so. Pull my, he's like, pull my finger. And that was pretty much it. Yeah. We'll see you at our next away game in Kansas City. Can't wait to eat victory brisket there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even eat like cheeseburgers, but I like Wahlberg. <laughs> Arrest that man. Brisket, bronze. Well, ladies, the, the tears were streaming down my face from laughing <laughs> every moment. Dude. And you and met a guy with the same level of energy that you Adam's got. energy. Adam dude, is awesome. <laughs> the Bob Dylan inter interpretation of the Chargers theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chargers. <laughs> And then he had a picture of his notebook where he did all of his research. <laughs> you found your hex. You found a good one, ladies. We got to wow. get him on for a fan focus. I got to meet this guy. Please. Yeah. I hope you say, I hope you got his number. Yeah. Uh, Hook we, it up. we need to have him on this show. Uh, man, oh, so cool. So many great moments that you were in the front row for. <sighs> But that Parham touchdown that was awesome. You got a Lowy to come over. You got Keenan yeah. saying hi to you after he did that. <sighs> oh my God. I'm just that's so what amazing. a game for you two to go to. And what a what a journey that the Jack Duggins bar that they oh, went yeah. to. Like everything. That was such a great experience. And again, so good. I was laughing the whole time. I was just crying and I still have tears in my eyes and I need to wipe that was out. So that funny. was so funny. You guys Ladies, are the best. You are the best. Thank you so much for gracing this podcast with your awesome video. Can't wait for the next one. We've got some time to wait. I think, I think, oh, we'll be making, maybe I wonder if we can. Oh, can we be in it? Is maybe, that okay? Can, can, we, can we maybe meet up? I want to be on one of these videos. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Please. Don't sound so desperate. They won't put us in. We <laughs> and we're not like on our podcast or anything, but I really would rather be in your little video than on this show. <laughs> Oh God. All right. Well, ladies again, thank you. Thank you. You for are the everything. best. Yeah, um, so good. All right. Time to go on to the next segment, folks. Ask Bolt Fam. Let's get into it. <laughs> time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we start off with OM Run, who asked the question. How high did Kevin's blood pressure get? And when did he say, F it, and rip the watch off? It's so funny you say this because we 
<laughs> my my wife my wife was driving like the last leg to go take us vacation, and I was sitting in the passenger seat with my hand up holding my phone, and then she just reached over and like hit my my watch a couple times, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "I want to see where you're at, hon." So she put on like the blood pressure, like the heart rate, and yeah. I was I was sitting at a comfortable ninety two, like I was sitting at ninety two. Uh-huh. Uh, beats per minute. So yeah, and then I got notified I should probably stand up Sit or down. something. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you need to do something because your heart is not normal right now. Um, Fix your heart, guy. No, never took it off because you know what? F- it. You know, <laughs> let's do it live. If I'm dying, I want to know I'm dying. Yeah, yeah. Hey. yeah. I want to know when I'm in full blown cardiac arrest, and I might have gotten close there at the end of that game. I want to know sure. when I'm fully bolted up, right? Fully now, so. bolted up. <laughs> So, all right. Well, good good to hear the watch is working. and uh, <laughs> It's working well. <laughs> thank you, OM Run, for the question. Appreciate it. Let's move it on now to Gavin Gibson. Gavin. Who asked the question. What an absolute roller coaster of emotions that was. Scared the crap out of my baby daughter so many times with shouting and cheering. By the end of the game, I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> what non-sports scenario would you compare being a Chargers fan to to get the same ups and downs as you were as you feel watching a Chargers game? Hey, no roller coasters, please, as that's too easy. Also, how amazing was Keenan Allen? People who said he was done are eating their words now. On to the convicts next week. Family, trust, respect. Bolt up, Tay, love you, bye. All right. Well, I'm glad you didn't throw up there, Gavin. Yeah, we're dude. all in the same I, boat. <laughs> I had a moment, dude. It was close. Um, my tummy was hurting for sure. <laughs> it's hard to game. say. I think the closest thing I have is my kids. Like something I love as much as the charge. Like I, I love my kids more, obviously. But like the, I had, I had to preface it with that. <laughs> wait, wait. A so in the easiest way is not that it to obvious. That, in the easiest way to compare it to that. <laughs> Is like you know when you your little your my my almost two year old gets on it's like three goes, year olds yeah, go to yeah, the yeah. playground gets on gets on a slide he's go at the top but falls off the slide instead of actually going down it lands everyone stops breathing for a second <laughs> waiting to see if he's alive he stands up everything's okay everything's okay that's the closest uh, thing I have to yeah, yeah like yeah. he he doesn't actually make it down the slide he falls yeah. off the slide but he doesn't die no he gets back up lands and tries again hard <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, gets yeah. up tries we again can, the season will continue who knows he might fall again he might not the slide hey, might break i love him no matter what you know what might explode i love him no matter what he can fall on his face as many times as he needs to because it's going to make him a better man there you go. yeah sooner or later he'll get down that slide builds yeah. character builds character yeah. i thought of parenting as well i didn't have a specific example like that my thought was more my three, my three year old right it's now. It's like Kevin, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> my my three year old right now. One day with Franklin is a Charger season. It's like one second he's like, "You're stupid, Daddy. I hate you," and then the next day he's like, "Daddy, let's cuddle and watch a show." And then it's like, "Daddy, I never want to talk to you again." And then it's, "Daddy, can we go like out and play catch?" It's like that's what being a Charger fan is like. <laughs> your, your second born, my bipolar three year old. <laughs> oh God! <clears throat> awesome. Also, the scaring your baby. So I have three sons right now. The fourth is still with in, inside of my wife. In <laughs> utero, <closed. laughs> yeah, in utero. <laughs> so my two oldest, my six and your three year old. They now finally know how to watch a football game and like get excited when good things happen. Oh, I saw that video you sent us was amazing. So they were screaming at the top of their lungs. And my one year old, I looked at him on the ground. I was like, "Uh oh, like they're screaming really loud. How is this going to go? It was my one year old, like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, where's mom? Where's dad? And I picked him up. I was like, you're going to freak out right now. He's the first son that I've had that didn't start crying when everyone started reacting to Charger games. We're going to win the Super Bowl. I don't know what this means, boys, but (laughs) I don't know what to do with this information. (laughs) Unconfirmed what that means, but the first two, anytime I would scream at like excited at a Charger game, they would start bawling hysterically. This guy's just tough. I think that means the Super Bowl is coming. He's prepared for the screaming. The new breed. Yeah. Early February. All right. Gavin Gibson, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Daryl21. And shout out to Josh Rodriguez. I'm going with Daryl21 on this one. 
who asked the question. Hey, guys, just checking in to see if you all have your defibrillators handy because mine wore out and I now have 50 more gray hairs. What the fuck did we just witness? Hoo ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, number one, glad we finally got a win. Okay. Number two, congrats to our boy Keenan for a record setting day and to Herbie for yet another awesome game. Number three, oh, prayers for Mike Dub for a speedy recovery. Come on. Now, my question for this week has already been answered to nauseam, I'm sure. But on that fourth and one, what would you have called? Oh, what would you have called? Now, what would you have done? But if going for it, what is your call? Okay, not whether or not you would have done it. Okay, that's not what I'm asking. What would, you be, what would be your call? All right. Mine is very freaking simple. Tell the damn coaches, Herbert is six foot six, 240 pounds. Sneak the fucking ball. Hoo-ha. Okay. Can't wait till Tuesday episode. This one should be interesting. Can't love you, bye. Hoo-ha. I want to show you what the Chargers have been doing to me. Look at this beard. Look at all you these got some grays in there. <laughs> yeah, you're turning. Bulldog is full. full. Listen, full if you go back okay. to the yeah, first fashion. episode, <laughs> it was <laughs> not this way. <laughs> Yeah. Like 2019 that's a different beard it's yeah. a way different beard <laughs> amen uh, but uh yes <laughs> my defibrillator broke years ago daryl yeah um, defibrillator. so <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a phone charger at this point but yeah uh <laughs> what uh the question is what would be your play call uh, if you're going for it on fourth and one which by the way we should say I know people have come out. Some pundits have come out and said that was the stupidest call they could have done going for it on fourth and one. I've seen a lot of people say, Hey, analytics say you go for it on fourth and one. When with all of the, everything lined up the way that it should be. What do you guys think? Go, go, go. Uh, <laughs> I, he wants to start. <laughs> you know, I think it's what coach said in the, in the post presser. It was like, it, there, you know, because we were up by four, that changes the whole dynamic. A yes. shorter field, they were throwing all o- all over us. They they were getting big chunk plays, but when they compressed the field, they weren't as successful when we got into the red zone. Right. So it, it made sense. Would I have called a different play? Probably. I'm not putting that into Josh Kelly when he had 11 carries for 12 yards. Yeah. You know, this that defensive line. That's what they were like. All right, that's what we're gonna do. I maybe this is the wrong answer. I would have gone to the guy that did everything this year, this this game, I would have play actioned it out and really curveballed the shit out of what they were going to do because they had all their personnel on that line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I that Maybe that's not the right answer, but I, I would have play actioned it and and either let him run um, and get that yard or thrown. That Maybe that's the wrong answer, though. I mean, it, I yeah. I don't think it's a wrong answer. I think I don't... I, if I was the head coach of the Chargers in that situation, I punt. Um, that's just my, I know I've been a head coach before mm-hmm. and I know that I'm more of a conservative head coach. You have to have an identity as a coach and right. you have to be consistent. Um, like that's what your team knows that this is what we are. Um, I think that when they go for it on fourth down, everyone's like, oh yeah, it's coach Staley. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Now he's become a little bit inconsistent. I feel like in the last year over like the end of last season to the beginning of this season, it does feel a little bit inconsistent on when he goes for it. It When people ask him, I feel like he wants to say, I trust my gut, but he can't say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I really think that's what he does. Like if his gut feels like we need to go for it here, he goes for it. Mm-hmm. He blames it on analytics and you can defend it with analytics, but it feels a little bit like it's like a gut play, which is okay. As a coach, I've done it before where I'm like, we're going for it. I onside it every single kick because I'm like, I'm not letting another team run, return a kick for a touchdown in high school. It's like, we're, we're going to onside every kick. We might get one, <laughs> but they, it's like, there's weird stuff you do as coaches that that's just your identity and your makeup. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, I don't fault him. If I was the head coach, I punt it hundred percent. Yeah. Every single time, no timeouts. You have to score a touchdown. You have to drive all the way down the field. Now that's not to say that they wouldn't have completed a big play and scored because We've given up a lot of big plays this season. So I understand going for it, but handing the ball to Josh Kelly, that doesn't, that's not the play call that I would have gone with. No, no. You you either sneak it or you spread the ball out, let Justin, like, 
they're going to bring pressure. They brought pressure all day. Keenan has beaten man to man coverage all day long. All day. Let him try to beat man to man. And if he doesn't, right. you throw the ball away and then you're at the same exact spot that you were in. So right. in my mind, you put the ball in Justin's hands, Let whether you do, do a sneak or whether you try to throw the ball for a first down, it doesn't matter. You don't need the clock running. You just need the first down. Right. right. So if you don't get it or you get it, the clock stopped either way. Yeah. And I, and I'm cu- I'm sorry, just real quick thing yeah. on the analytics. I'm curious to go back and I'm sure people have kept track of this. The moments when we punted or the ones we found questionable. I'm curious what what the analytics or what it says in those moments. Because mm-hmm. right. I feel like he, for me, it feels like he's really sticking to that. Like it's very clean cut. You know, my gut, I want to put it in my hands of my guys, but also the analytics have to say that. If it's a psychotic, a psychotic go for it, it doesn't feel like those are happening. It might seem like it to us because they don't happen around the league all that much. Right. But, you know, it's in the numbers. I mean, it made sense to me. Like, as soon as it was, as soon as that was the case, that it was going to be fourth and one, I'm like, he's going to go for it because I know that he wants to put the game away. And I know that he probably trusts his offense to get it done more than he trusts his defense to defend it. And again, I think there was, there was, two, we gave up a lot of big, big plays. We didn't give up a lot of short plays in the end zone. I felt like the defense was a lot stronger. We had big, yeah, we when, had two red zone stops. Big yeah. Ones. So and I losses, think they were a lot, a lot stronger of, lot in the red stuff. zone. So I, everything made sense except for Josh Kelly. That was the only thing that just didn't make sense to me because of how much well, he we didn't have a, we don't game. have a fullback on the roster. I know. Like if you have so. Xander Horvath, you hand him the ball and he chose to get that yard. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I, th- I feel like no matter what, it's a QB sneak or it's a try to give ball to Justin Lumber. Like yeah. fake that little quick handoff. Let him pick up and see if Keenan's just running straight down the field. And why, and why aren't people running that Philadelphia sneak thing that gets them a first down all the time? Push, push. Like why? Let's put that in the playbook and, and do that. Yeah. I know we want to protect Justin, but we can get a yard. He's a tough dude. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are our play calls there, Daryl21. Thank you for asking the question. Thank you, Josh Rodriguez, as well. Let's move it on now to Scotty B63, who asked the question. Has Keenan Allen now replaced Easton Stick as a QB? So I want to know. What do you I'll, think? Hey, yeah, he had a great game. Great game as QB two. Um, well, I love the, they put yeah. out the graphic that like Keenan Allen was like had the top QB rating amongst all the other quarterbacks because of how one great pass, of pass, one yeah, touchdown, one, pass, one touchdown. It was like a one fifty eight QBR rating. That's awesome. Uh, but no, of course he hasn't replaced. Easton no, State. we want him running, running routes, just making people look yeah, silly. But, but let me yeah. ask Easton you this: gets, If Easton gets in the game, he's got to have someone to throw to. But yeah. let me ask you this: Heaven forbid, Herbert goes down. Like Heaven forbid, Easton like Stick goes it. down. You see Keenan Allen go out there <laughs> to line up behind center. How do you feel? You're like, okay, I know Keenan Allen can throw. Let's see what happens here. Do you feel at least like kind of comfortable, or you're like, no, no this is. T- no, not Keenan not Allen can bit. complete passes when the guy's wide open. <laughs> Even yeah. if they just go man cover zero, so they're bringing eight guys, seven, eight guys every play. There's yeah. nothing you're going to be able to complete or yeah. accomplish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is a funny idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's uh, not the case there, Scotty B63. But thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Jeremy. Ah, oh, Jeremy, long time, but who asked the question? Yeg Shemesh, it's me, Borat. I only have one query for you. What is wrong with Dick Man the Kick Man? Was it his moon time? <laughs> Many blessings to you. Bye bye. Fifth- <laughs> his moon time. <laughs> Dick um, man, the kick, man. dick man, the kick man. I like that a lot. That was um, a career long attempt. That wasn't a little shot of the field. I know. Yeah. And just a rare miss. I mean, they were saying he was making like 60 yard kicks like during practice. So it's like, he just pulled it, just pulled it. it. Yeah. There wasn't it was, wind or anything. I do want to warn you when you're watching a game, like YouTube TV on your iPhone, the detail isn't great. So I had no idea where that kick was going until the referees threw their arms up. Mm. And they, I, I was, I had my dick man confidence <laughs> until I didn't. Because uh, the, my iPhone. That'll get you every time, Kevin. You every dick time. man confidence. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, 
Yeah, don't know what was up with uh, Dicker. It was a very rare miss. It was sad to see it. Obviously, would have changed the whole end of that game if we were up by seven instead of four. Totally. Uh, but then you go for it, it for around. sure on yeah. that fourth down. If you're yeah. up seven, take the shot, get the win, yeah. get the first down. Yeah. So he'll he'll bounce back. He'll get better for sure. But uh, Jeremy, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Friar Bolt, who asked the question. Did you shit in your diaper? <laughs> I for sure know I did. What a game by Herbert and Allen. Can you name a better QB wide receiver combo in the NFL right now? Maybe two and Hill, but Allen and Herbert have been nothing short of amazing. F*** the Las Vegas pussy pirates and bolt up. Kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, they're playing. I'll, they are playing next level right now. Yeah, like yeah, those two th- are the best. In the this is sure. and I thought you know we saw the best games out of Keenan when he had Phil and Phil. That was his guy too. Like oh, clearly yeah. back to back quarterbacks. You're the guy, mm-hmm. Justin. Uh, it's really. Crazy. I'm excited to see how this keeps going. No, this has been extremely exciting to see Herbert have such chemistry with Keenan. Like, like I was talking about earlier, like just the way they talk about each other is yeah. a way that like you feel like there's more of a connection there than perhaps Keenan and Phil had, you know, I'm sure Keenan looked up to Phil more than anything. Cause Phil had been in the league for it's a different dynamic. Had. That's it's a been, very different good point. dynamic. Good yeah. point. So I think it's now more almost Justin kind of looking up to Keenan Allen for as long as he's been in the league. And now they're becoming the throw to him. Now they're becoming equals. You know what I mean? Like they're going, it's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I can't think of a better QB wide receiver combo in the league right now. There isn't one. There isn't one. It doesn't exist. Stop looking. Stop. (laughs) Stop drilling. You've hit oil. Yep. Friar bolt. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to house of pain. Who asked the question? I say, I say, well done to all the players for the win, but uh, you took about, I say, you took about 10 years off the old ticker with that ending. Shoot, boy, I say, keep chopping that tree because it's going to fall sometimes. We need 30 back in the worst way. Run game, need, I say, run game needs a boost, and what say you? FTR, it's right a week, baby. I say, okay, K, love you, bye. One of these teams has to decide that they're going to take away Justin. Like what they did week one, the Vic Fangio when he faced, you know, that's the only time it really, we got the run game fully blasting. So if they're going to continue to like want to stop our run, then we'll keep doing that. I think eventually you're going to have a a defensive scheme that's going to be like, okay, we're going to pop a whole bunch of yards and run. It's just how they decide to play us. And that's what Callum Moore does. He takes what they give him. So keep, you know, keep giving it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we'd love to see Keenan or Keenan. We'd love to see Austin Eckler back. It was interesting that we finally found out that it was a, a high ankle sprain. Because for a while there, I don't think we knew what fully the injury was, just that it was something with his ankle. It was a contract yeah. sprain. He yeah. Was, he was nursing the, the... A contract sprain. <laughs> you, hey, I see low what blow, you did Low there. blow, low blow. I didn't mean it. It was a joke. It was a funny. But uh, yeah, now that it's a high ankle sprain, hopefully... I mean, I don't... He's not going to play this week. I don't expect him to play this Sunday. No, hopefully... He'll take we, this week. Just because the bye week next week, you get that double down... He'll be back after the bye. There's no, there's, uh, there's no point in pushing it. No, he's still, he's still even. He played one game. He had 200 yards. He's still going to be in like the top <laughs> yeah. 10 rushing when he comes back week five, which is crazy to think. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, that's what we think. There, House of Pain. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Hangry Seth and shout out to Steve Dean. But I'm going with Hangry Seth because we haven't heard his name in a while. But Steve Dean, what do you think? I'm going to take your shot. Certified fresh. Fre- Thanks, Kyle. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. We're going with Hangry Seth, who asked the question. I've been a while since I've asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Why are we not seeing Spiller? Like, is he that bad in practice? If one RB ain't cutting it, don't you want to try another? Wish you Mike Dub a healthy recovery. Bumped up, FTI, can't love you, bye. 
I'm trying not to wake up my family sleeping over there. Oh my god! Why haven't we done that? I'm sorry. Place? Adam threw down the Bob Dylan and brisket oh of bras. I had to throw Inspired. down my like, Bob Dylan. Yeah, yeah. That was beautiful. That's kind of that that's really gotta be going to the. Maybe rotation. we could do a dueling Bob Dylan when we meet up, Adam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the question at hand is why why have we not seen more Spiller? And I wish we had an answer for you. <laughs> Hangry Seth and Steve Dean, but uh, I mean, because it certainly make... seemed like he was more productive per carry again versus Joshua Kelly this last game, and I would have liked to have seen more. But yeah, it's like you—it's almost confusing, more confusing why Spiller doesn't make the active roster than J.C. Jackson. <laughs> you know, it's like J.C. Jackson we've seen not play well. Mm-hmm. Spiller we've just legitimately not seen play ever. Mm-hmm. This is year two of he's young. Tuli Tui Pelotu is 21 years old. And he's arguably productive. And that, I think it's a different breed. He's a different breed, though. I think that's but, chalk it up to that. But you, uh, but you, you spent a sure third can. round pick on getting Isaiah Spiller. Yeah, that's one round difference. And I, the guy I, hasn't even seen the field. Dotson was an unsigned free agent, and he <laughs> was on the it's roster Trump before did. Spiller did. So, yeah, and no what explanation happened? as to why. Yeah. Like, we. They haven't sat down and said the guy doesn't practice hard. He doesn't show up ready to go. Like he doesn't take it serious. Like w- there has to be something outside of just the physical traits because the guy's bigger, stronger, has better vision yeah. than most of the running backs on the team right now. So what's the what's the what's holding him up? And I feel like Kellen Moore is very candid when he's asked questions. He's very honest. I don't know if you've listened to his interviews. They're really good. It, it was like kind of when when Staley became the Chargers head coach, like year one, like open book, told you everything. I want I want one of these reporters to ask him that next time that happens. Because I think yeah. they'll like every three weeks they'll bring him on. It's not very often. Yeah, he's not so, consistent though. No. So I would love I'd love that question asked to him because I feel like we would get at least a signal to why. Mm-hmm. So I hope you're listening, Daniel Popper, so you can ask him the question he's next. Not, uh, <laughs> it's next not happening. Meeting. But uh, Angry Seth and Steve Dean, wish we had a better, more solid answer for you, but we're just as confused as you are. We're not uh, on the inside, my friend. We are not, but we appreciate you asking the question. Let's move it on now to Arnie Gordon, who asked the question. Before training camp, I asked which player had the most to prove. Two of the answers were Pipkins and K-9. With how they played so far, are still going to ride the doubt train? Or, hang on a second, I lost my place. Shit. Fuck. Or is it time to get to the chopper? Hashtag bulked up. K, love you, bye. K-9's had two good games. He he had a couple missed, missed tackles, I think, yeah. the last last game, but... He's he's definitely slowly improving, and he cl- he finished it off. He finished the game off. I will yeah. always remember when players step up and have a big play to win us a game. Oh, yeah. That will always live in my heart. So K9's in my heart forever. <laughs> forever. Forever. It's ever. Forever. He also, ever. he loves hard. There was a recent he clip that was put on the charge of social media. <laughs> he just made that interception said, I got it and started saying, I love you to everybody over and over again. I love you. I love you. I love you too. I love you. 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 That was so good. I'd probably so have this similar reaction. I would just be like, dude, I love you. Dude, I love, I love you. you. I love you. I love this so much. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, a canine, I think, has probably stepped up. Pipkins has certainly had moments like he we did see a couple times where like he kind of let defenders run by and sack Justin Herbert, which is not what we want to see. But I'm sure every team that we go against is probably yeah. putting their strongest edge runner against 100 percent. Yeah, they're not going it. They're not going on the they're other not side. Going at Slater. Slater. No, <laughs> no, no, because no, Sean Slater is perfect. Like, yeah, does doesn't have a playoff type of mentality. Yeah, so you're not going. You're not going to put your best guy there this week. Max Crosby will be on Trey Pipkins 100 entire game. Yeah, there's, I think there's no yeah. point. I think Pipkins' floor has raised for me. I was kind of doubting him yeah. earlier on. I'm feeling a little more confident in him, and mm-hmm. I think he's kind of proved that the first few weeks. His floor is up on for me. Yeah, I think I think it's safe to say both those guys, Trey and Keenan, have 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 showed up when we said we need them to show up. They've showed up. 
yeah. in more of a role than they have in the past, for sure. Yeah, but totally. more than we ever expected them to and have certainly exceeded expectations. So um, we love it, Arnie. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Salty Sports Guy, who asked the question. Ooh, hell yeah. I'm wondering what kind of viewers you guys are in those intense late game moments. Do you pace? Do you bite your nails? Nervous eat? Doom scroll Twitter? Group text? Calmly talk out game scenarios to anyone who will listen, including yourself, or just a cold blank stare? This is a good question. This is a good question. I am really curious what your answers are because what, I so know they're... Go ahead. It's different when I'm by myself versus when I'm with you guys. When I'm or by in a myself, car with your family. Yeah, when I'm yeah, generally when I'm by myself and I'm not surrounded by other people that love my team. Yeah. I am cold blank stare, don't talk to me. I got the blinders on. Yeah. But I'm texting you guys. Yeah. Like that's that's my thing. It's like, "Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's going on?" Or the panicked FaceTime. You've gotten a few of those from me. <laughs> for sure. So that's, I Dude, think that's what do my, we do? Like, Whoa. <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I can't believe it. I literally, I threw my, when we went for it on fourth down and didn't get it, I threw my phone into the front of the windshield where it like almost got stuck in the oh, front. No. And Josie's like, oh God, what happened? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, that was, I, I'm, I'm a wild person to watch Charger games with. I'll just say that. You are guess. wild. Yeah. It's a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> there will be crying. There will be laughter. There will be hugs. Yes. There'll be all of it. Blood. <laughs> feces. There will be biting. Yeah. <laughs> there will be biting. Um, I think yeah. my style of watching is, it's honestly a week to week thing. Because week one, I was very aggressive and angry at the end of that game. Because there was just so much buildup and so much expectation. Whereas this week, we got to the end of the game. I was like, well, it doesn't look like it's going to work out again. You know? You're so right. I was just kind of like silently watching with, with like a, ah, shoot, it's going to happen again type of mentality. So I'm definitely not a pacer. I don't get up and walk around. I will bite the nails. My nails are pretty short here. Week Ooh. three. There's not much to bite. There's not much left to bite here. Um, definitely don't doom scroll Twitter. I just heard a kid oh, in no. Kevin's room. I'm going to go mute for a few minutes while you guys continue to talk. I'll okay. chime in. Just chime, I'll chime in. in. I'll chime in. Okay. I'll, okay. Okay. I'll be right back. Good. All right. Okay. Yeah. I hear I hear a kid crying. Well, it got really quiet. He had a fan on or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's, I'm very similar to Kevin. I'm kind of, I kind of like don't talk, lock in and then get in the group text. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get in the group text for sure. But like, in in most of the time, I'm like, I'm able to sit there and watch it because like I want to see what's gonna happen. So like if it goes yeah. our way, I go, yeah. And then if it doesn't, yeah. I just kind of do that that silent, yeah. like just drop my head, like, man. I'm and not then I'll mad, touch I'm you just guys. Disappointed. Going, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, the only exception was this this last game when we didn't get that fourth down. Yeah. I was like, I mean, hands on my face, just like eh! Like, yeah, <laughs> just really, that was probably the most emotive that I've been in, in a game, like in a negative way, yeah. I would say, because normally I just quietly just go like, well, you do. Even when okay. you're with us, when me and Kevin are very emotional and over the top, yeah, you're like, <sighs> I just, I have to be centered because I can't yeah. let myself go too far down yeah. because I just don't want to be, can't go full you can't, I can't go full dug yeah, in. I can't. When you're with two of us, <laughs> I you can't have three of us all yeah, together. There's three full Duggins. Oh my god! We when me and Kev watch the, the game, arrest like, page. you never go full Duggan ever. <laughs> the highs are real high, but the lows are real low. I can't go that low. <laughs> so I don't like uh, going that low either. Yeah. <laughs> so great question, salty sports guy. Thank you for asking it. Let's move it on now to Rebolted 2006. Who asked the question? Charges Vin group huggins a shower tonight. <laughs> that was ugly, but they brought the win home, which is all that matters. Number one, with that being said, what superstitious game day ritual do you think made the most significant impact? Hmm? 
And two, what do you picture this Tuli and Bosa combo as? I'm thinking stepbrothers, lol. Thinking about that emotional hug Joey gave Tuli in game. Oh, gives me goose pimples. I'll let you handle everything else. My mind is fried from Twitter, Instagram, and my inner negativity battle. It's like a little alien trying to break out of my stomach every week. Chargers Faithful enjoys this win. Players, prayers up from Mike Will. On to Raiders Week. K loves you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Um. All right. Yes, this kilt. was the game we brought out every hands down possible superstition. The kilt. I think the kilt is what tipped it over. To be honest. Uh, <laughs> and, and if you don't know, I don't think Adam loves the kilt, but now he has to <laughs> wear. The kilt. I have to. I. Can, it doesn't yeah. matter. No, it's. Yeah. I have to put the team before myself. So. You're doing it for all of us. Yeah, I do it for you, folks. Yeah. I think it was Kevin Socks, but you know, whatever. No, <laughs> my opinion doesn't matter. That that played a part. <laughs> it played a part, but it wasn't the whole thing. No. With our <laughs> forces combined, <laughs> Captain. We will Planet. win these games. Yeah. Um, and yes, the Tuli and Bosa combo. The dynamic <laughs> duo. Brothers. Yeah. I, I looked up some of the most duo. <laughs> I just quick Google searched some of the most dynamic duos in history. Number one on this list via BuzzFeed, Han Batman Solo and, and Chewbacca. And then Batman Robin. Okay. Mario Luigi. Uh-huh. Bert and Ernie. <laughs> I, I got Tom Bert and Ernie. Jerry. I like the Bert and Ernie one yeah. a lot better. Um, I, I, I could see Bert and Ernie. <laughs> Doc and Marty. Marty. <laughs> Buzz and Woody. Scott. There's some, yeah. there's some dynamic duos in history. They might be in top 10 of that buzzworthy article next year, after all. all yeah. Said yeah, and Joey and Tooley. Yeah. <laughs> Frodo they go and together Samwise. like Joey and Tooley. <laughs> It'll <laughs> be a common phrase. It'll be a bumper sticker. Let's go. <laughs> um. All right. Rebolt to 2006. It's like Glad Zeus you... and Hercules. Isn't Zeus, isn't Hercules <laughs> the son of Zeus? Yeah, so is Tooley the son of Joey? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Joey is our Zeus. I, I want to see Thule do like a a, a signature dance. Oh, like no, no. Shrug. Like he like oh, lets him do the shoot we together. Wait, we were talking about this shrug before off. we started recording when we waited an hour for you to show up. Um, <laughs> do you remember how Philip Rivers used to wear one glove? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Justin Herbert all of a sudden showed up with an arm sleeve, a solo arm sleeve. And dude, I'm not gonna lie, I love him. I don't love him, but I love him. That made me yeah. kind of love him. He looks really Fall cool. Fall in love with him all it over. Looks yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's like a cool, more modern nod to the single glove. <laughs> yeah. Like a tribute to <laughs> Philip Rivers. It's a tribute wearing to the Philip one Rivers. You guys, you guys yeah. have seen Boogie Nights before, right? Yes. The Philip Seymour Hoffman, when he sees Dirk Diggler for the first time, he's like, <sighs> That's what I did when he had the sleeve on. I was like, yeah. that guy looks way too cool. I, I, You're I'm missing not the invisible. point, Kevin. Do you think that it was a tribute to Philip Rivers? No, I'm, he's, no. no. Hey, <laughs> buy into sports? the narrative, dude. Sorry, you said you said yes. sleeve and my brain went blank. That shows you how much I feel you about it. You didn't even this. hear me say Philip Rivers. This is getting to be an issue. Do you think that Justin Herbert wearing one sleeve was a tribute to Philip Rivers wearing one glove? Wearing one I'd like glove. to think that, but no. No. All right. Well, like, Kevin, because he, he scraped it. It was a so glad you could be here. It's a practical thing. It's a practical thing because so he hurt his arm. You could show up. One. Go, go, all right. What does that nine, do nine, to protect his arm? It just uh, he like had like nothing. Rash. No. He had, like, he had, like, <laughs> no. That's, it does that shows nothing up to protect his arm. It shows up, dude. He had a crazy rash. The brisket broads posted it. And we're like, crazy oh my, rash. dude, you should see his rash on his arm after week one. Next thing you know, the sleeves on that arm. I hope you folks are watching YouTube to see the slack. Job How is from this Kyle. not common sense? Do you do you, when you skin your knee? Do you or do you not put on a band aid, Kyle? <laughs> I don't want. If I had a rash, I wouldn't want anything on it. Honestly, you don't want to. So you don't want to re rash a rash. That'll never heal. I guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks if he takes it off. That's the only yeah, way to know. Fully healed. I think not in a million years is he wearing that to protect his rash. His I guarantee you he's wearing it to protect his rash. That is the 
dumbest thing I've ever heard. Card. What are they for? Let's go look up what these things are actually for. <laughs> Oh, aesthetic. We'll be here it's all, all aesthetic. <laughs> no. It's a shooting sleeve. Players in the NBA wear it for no reason except to look cool. That's it. Justin has never worn it until he got his little scrapey poo, and now he's wearing it. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, the only way to know is in a couple it's weeks. Science. Kyle, it's science. Kyle, I'm with you. Science. I'm with you, buddy. It's got to be Thank for Philip Rivers. So. Hey, who do you who do you side with? And, uh, go to the comments. Tell us <laughs> what a sales. Go to bed. Who, who do you Grandpa. side with? Go to the comments. <laughs> I already went to bed. I'm fine now. Rebolt to 2006. Back. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Seesaw. It had nothing Million. to do with this question. It had nothing to do with it. But we're moving on to Seesaw Million, who asked the question. So, Philip Rivers and Herbie Victory Brisket, when will we get that video? <laughs> <laughs> when Philip, when Herbert calls and lets Philip know, hey, I wore that sleeve for you, big guy. Yeah, come on over. I have some brisket. Actually, no, we'll no, probably no. never get it's the video. Because, rash. No, we'll probably never get the video because Justin hates the cameras. So unless he's forced to sit down with Phil and share it's some so brisket, but he's he, he get over it. yourself, Justin. Like you're not even in all in. It's frustrating <laughs> they're saving a big old fat episode for him they're oh, keeping yeah. all the good but justin stuff. herbert episode but just a little side side let's go on a little walk on the path next to the podcast do you guys see the gunner rivers stuff how he's oh, thrown yes. for like 12 Killing touchdowns it, yeah. and like a thousand 1200 yards in three games or something and they're playing like that. they're playing a pro style offense under center it's not yeah. like he's back there at shotgun just Spread offense. So like, it. Phil's like, no, we're going to run what we ran with the Chargers, and you're going to learn a professional offense when you're 14. He's a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's what's happening out there in Alabama, right? He's, I will say he's a little quicker than dad. He's got a little bit of the wheels on there, Mom. Well, you never saw That's... Phil as a 15-year-old. He may have been able to run a little bit. You saying he's going to break down pretty soon? Be like his old man? Sorry, sorry. If he gets that tall, that quick, it could happen. Yeah, you he turn throws. into kind of the giraffe. <laughs> throws. Energy. He throws just like Phil. Exactly like his dad. <laughs> it, I've never seen anyone else throw like Phil. He's no. It's identical. It's DNA, dude. I love it. It's a shot put. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, Karen Love Sports, our friend Karen, for sharing that. She has, like, the YouTube video. They, like, show the games live. Oh, and right. And she sent yeah. us that. And I, was, I, like, tuned in to watch a little bit of the game live. Heck, yeah, I'm dude. Such a nerd. That's a good game to watch. Yeah, thanks, Karen. But uh, yeah, Seesaw Million, I don't think we'll get a video anytime soon. As much as we'd love it, as much as the fans want it, I don't think that would it will happen. But we appreciate the question. Thank you for asking it. Let's move it on now to Luis Fernando Areza, who asked the question. Hi there. What a game. This game felt like a movie. As soon as the broadcast started, I was greeted by the drum and skull chant, and it was epic. And I just want to shout all out my all my away Charger fans because going to a stadium for the Vikings looked so unnerving. You guys are bad asses, but let me tell you why this game was the best and why your LA Chargers are the most electric team in the NFL. <sighs> Justin Herbert finished the game with 405 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, shooting 40 for 47 of 39%, one of them being a crossbody dot to Keenan Allen and another being 100 touchdown with an almost intercepted bobble catch and becoming one in seven players to have that kind of a game in NFL history. <gasps> Keenan Allen with 215 yards, breaking Chargers franchise record with 18 receptions, while also getting his first TD pass for 49 yards to one and the only Mike Williams to finish with 121 receiving yards. Alohi Kimlin being a pass breaker machine, Tui Bash, Bosa and Pox getting a sack inch, and Kenneth Murray with some incredible tackles and a heart stepping interception to finish the game. <laughs> There was a lot of chirping between both secondaries and receivers. Man, did they shut them up and make those Vikings look like a bunch of little <laughs> the stadium was dead. My question is, which charger do you hope was mic'd up for the game? All righty then, K love you bye. That was awesome. So good. That dude, impressive work, Adam. Like First to go time, that yeah. fast on one breath. Not That's a long impressive. work. Not it's a long impressive. Work. Holy Thank shit. You. Uh who do you hope was mic'd up for the game? Is the Keenan Allen. Of Keenan course, Allen. Keenan Allen. 
all day. 100% oh, well, Keenan Allen. It's, I always hope Justin Herbert's mic'd up, but we have uh, Yeah, not but that's up. like yeah. living hope and dire and despair for but, that one. Or <laughs> based on yeah. based on one of the videos that came out, the I love you, I love you, I love you guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's Kenneth Murray was mic'd up. Could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. clear and concise. His love yous. Yeah. Good game for that. Not yeah. a bad one to have mic'd up either. No. So yeah, I'm he's trying to be to the action, calling the plays around all the action. Yeah. I think it was Kenneth Murray was mic'd up. Like we can just, anticipate. Guys, just mic them all up. It's not that expensive. That's you so have a true. lot just of money. Everybody <laughs> just build you know what? You're right, past. Kevin. When you're right, you're right. Yeah. Just give everybody a freaking You're not mic. right about we, the sleeve, but you can literally <laughs> take our what we pay for our season tickets and you could buy enough gear to mount to everybody with shit. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fine. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hey, do it. Picardi and Coke. Picardi and Coke. Do, do it. Do it. <laughs> Luis Fernando Areza, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Mr. Peck R, who asked the question. Well, I'm glad I hit the hard reset on the superstitions this week and took the full money the whole way to church. There was not enough bushes in the Garden of Eden to hide all of my nudeness. <laughs> But eventually they caught me naked. I was running across the stage by all the instruments and, well, they grabbed me by the organ. Ooh, okay. Anyways, I digress. (laughs) Wasn't it a beautiful sight to see so many of our boys back in their true form? It sure as H-E double hockey stick was. Now on to the balls. Game (laughs) balls, that is. Outside of canine Slay and Herbert, whom already received balls from Staley, would you each select a player who was overlooked that deserved a game ball as well? No copycats, no repeats. Now let's get it up for Ray Turd Week. Now y'all better yell out these answers with me, okay? Who are we going to beat? The Raiders. Raiders. I can't yell. Yell I it yell. out. I, I okay, can't yeah. yell, guys. All right. Who are we Whisper. gonna smash? The Raiders. We okay. gonna crush the Raiders. The Raiders. <laughs> Who are we gonna kiss? The Raiders. Yeah, I almost got you. BTF, big family trust, respect, kill everybody. <laughs> we gotta roll the punches here, Charge the Chat. Raiders. <laughs> Raiders. <laughs> Raiders. There you go. I like oh, that. That's, that's how I that's how I scare my kids. Like the, my 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 two year old like, in bit. the hallway, and I'm like, <laughs> diddles. He's like, ah! <laughs> Raiders. That's Who'd have been? I do. <laughs> no, I do. Donna. If one of my kids hears that, they start <laughs> sprinting. <laughs> like, oh shoot! That's going. Oh, <laughs> It's that big f***ing shark again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question okay, is. A Viking, a Viking couldn't take the shark either. We got to run. <laughs> they run pretty fast for me. so scared. Spartans of can't take us down. <laughs> Nothing can take down the shark. Run. <laughs> okay. Game balls. We all know that K9, Slay, and Herbert got game balls, but who else? Thule. You can't know repeats. Okay, Kevin got in before anybody could answer. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> and went with Thule. That was crazy. Uh, go ahead, Kyle. Who do you think? I'll go with Corey Lindsley because centers just don't get enough credit. You know, you know like, like that. You, did he have a bad snap the whole game? No. He did not mess up a single snap. I coach flag football. I can't tell you how important it is <laughs> to not mess up a single snap. Corey Lindsley did Woo, have one just right over, the over the head, <laughs> not one roller back to his feet. Everything was perfect right there. Corey Lindsley. Uh, Corey ball. Lindsley. Game ball. Game no ball. Bad snaps. Uh, well, I think the obvious one is, is Donald Parham. To have him, he only you know he only had four yards. Doesn't matter. He put up, put up two touchdowns. Two touchdowns my friend. Four yards. I mean, that's what he's there for is to be the big tall guy that can get those kind of passes, dude. And that second one, the second how one was he insane, caught it, dude. How fast are those flying. jugs machines? Is he working on that thing? Was two hundred miles per hour. He knew the assignment. That defensive and he was lineman ready. went up to try to block it. He was like three seconds late <laughs> getting his hands up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so fast. It was so fast, but I mean, for for him to come in, you know, have the season that he did when he got injured, and to be able to bounce back, get injured again last year, 
come back and get he's at he's had like what three touchdowns now this season yeah yeah so I, I'm I love that he's doing that. I'm I'm a big fan of Donald Parham. I've got his signed photo right over here. I look at it every time. Me too. And I and I do love how Everett's running. How when he catches the ball, Everett's he running really not, good. Yeah, he is he's aggressive. Yeah, a mean man this year, and I'm I'm hoping for more from him too. Very excited for that. But yes, give give a game ball to Mr. Parham, please. Raiders, Raiders. Mr. Peckar, thank that. you for asking the like question. That. I won't do it again. Sorry, Kyle. Let Let's move it on now to flashback to your childhood, Carl. Carl. All right, fine. Bowling you have the bunk bed to yourself. I'm going downstairs. <laughs> Moving on to Carl Bowling Toft. Bowl- Bowling Toft. You had, to, you had to turn off the creepy Raider voice. Yeah, sorry. I had, it's hard easy. to turn it off. Give yeah. me the creepy Raider Bowling Toft. Bowling Toft. <laughs> to ask the question. Uh, well, well, well. After finding weird ways to lose, we finally found a weird way to win, huh? Pure dumb luck. What the heck? Flashbacks to Browns last year right there. What a game by Herbert and Keenan. Now, will we, will we be two and two at the bye? I mean, we have to, right? Uh-huh. It's Raider week. Yeah. Yeah. Totally Dude, two and two. At SoFi? I, at SoFi. We've run into some pretty strong teams the first these first three weeks, I think. Maybe not so much the Tennessee Titans, but... I think we're. I think we're going to have a pretty good day. If we don't, if we don't hurt ourselves, I think yeah. we'll we'll have a good game. Yeah. I how good? Wait for the rent free section of our episode on Friday. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I'm not. It's harder for me on vacation to do this. Kyle, thank you for bringing it up. Yes, if any of welcome. you guys see any crazy talk from Raider fans, please send me a message and share it. It will get on the podcast. Yes. Um, on this upcoming episode. Please send it to me as soon as possible. And I know that obviously a lot of the season is based on just wins and losses. That's all it is. Yep. But how good does it feel to know that like we went toe to toe against Miami and then this week they just demolished the Broncos 70 to 20. Like to know that we were at least in that we're game. Not, feels we're not. A we're not the worst defense better. anymore. Exactly. Oh no, not by. Yeah, a but that's long what I mean. Like that. everyone's like thirty second ranked defense. Well, yeah, because you ran into that shit. Watch yeah. every. Watch everyone start falling down the list when they run into the Dolphins. That's just the way that that's going around. Uh, yeah. Broncos seventy points. You're now the worst defense <laughs> forever. Worst. They have a. History. They have a. They have a minus. 50 something point differential point differential, differential yeah. on the season. <laughs> They're never going to make that up. <laughs> we're we're minus 1. They're yeah. minus 53. Yeah. No. That's there's no never bouncing back that from up. that. No. Way to go Lombardi. <laughs> the way to go. Well, Lombardi, your, your offense can't put up 70? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's too funny. We brought you in here for 70, Lombardi. Huh? <laughs> All right. I'm going to pass out if I do that too much. <laughs> Carl Bolingtoff, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Athir Kadir. Athir Kadir. Oh, sorry. Who asked the question? I'm sorry. Bulldog, this is for the coach, baby. Okay. We got a big win, baby. But here's my question. If our defense struggles against the Raiders, will there be a coaching change at the bye or not? I sure hope not, but I am worried, baby. Love you. Bye. FTR Herbert MVP 23. Let's go, baby. Uh, well, this is for the coach. Coach, what do you think? Coaching change at the bye if the uh, Chargers defense struggles against the Raiders? There's no coaching change anywhere in our near future. Mm-mm. It's just not going to happen. It, there's just no, I don't. The Chargers have never done anything like that. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. If you want to make a change, it'll be at the end of the season after it's all said and done. There's no point in doing it. I just don't understand the point of doing it right now unless it's just so toxic in the locker room that it's going to make players not want to come back. But that's just not the case. The yeah. post game speech, you can look at you know that locker room and how happy everyone was. Like it. We, we all have our theories and our thoughts, you know, the last two weeks, mm-hmm. but I think there's probably a much different story going on inside, inside that locker room. 100%. Um, Who would you rather have right now? Sean Payton or coach Staley? Coach yeah. Staley. 
Sean Payton's out there talking crap about other coaches, bagging yeah. on his quarterback, losing by 50 points. It's like if anyone's going to get fired, I would like get rid of that guy. He seems like a toxic. <laughs> How poison. amazing would that be if that Sean Payton go midseason? Dude, no. They gave up <laughs> draft picks. To I get know. That guy. I know. But at some point, you got to recoup some Sometimes losses. Sometimes you got to right? put out that dumpster fire. You know what yeah. I mean? You get some fucking. Before you let the whole, before you let Russell cook for too long. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to <laughs> um, over, overdo that. A little overdone. Yeah, I would be I would be really curious. I don't know the answer to this, but I would just be really curious. The the only reason that you would get rid of a coach is either, like you said, it's a toxic situation or you just you gotta fire this coach. But how many times has that happened where the person who stepped up to fill in the spot went on to win a Super Bowl? Every everyone points to the Raiders a couple of years ago when they beat the us Sachia. in that week seven. Yeah, but they didn't game, win yeah. the Super Bowl. Like they no, didn't go. They all lost the in the way. first round. No. Yeah. But but that was a successful opportunity. But they still didn't even keep him after that. And exactly. He's now somewhere doing something. You yeah, know, somewhere else doing something else. <laughs> oh, yes, I don't know. I just don't. I don't see the point in doing that ever. I mean, I if well, you do I, that, you're basically yeah. saying that's the end of the season. We're not yeah, going to go any over. further. Yeah, the season's well, done. After you put a shellacking on the Raiders, you're not firing your coach, and that's what's about to happen. Right. <laughs> Shellacking is like going to earn him time. Shellacking. You get at least two games in the next season, no problem. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, don't see it happening, Athir, but we appreciate the question. Thank you for asking it. And we go out of Ask Bolt Fam with Deeps. Certified fresh to close out the show? Who asked the question? We have to hold these boys accountable. Terrible execution. Okay. If I was head coach, my Q, my cornerbacks will not be beat by receivers like that, let me tell you. I would kick them in the keister so bad they'd wish they'd lock them up better. We should lock up Crooked Staley for not getting these fine gentlemen more prepared. I mean, they gave up huge passes. It's terrible. Anyway, it is a pleasure to be here, boys. I've not talked to you in a while. I just wanted to ask you two questions do you think the los angeles Chargers play tough football i don't think enough of our players have that dog in them i want our players to be known as players who punch the opposing teams in the mouth i think there's a real uh problem with the culture staley has built here's my second question are you ready okay kevin are you paying attention okay are you all right what is 15 times 12 I kid, I kid. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> what You've come across fuck? the device, <laughs> which lets you talk to everyone in the world, but has a lifespan of 30 seconds. What are you telling them? As always, thank you for the podcast. You boys do an amazing job. Let me tell you, let's get this train back on track and let's get a win, a Super Bowl. Okay. Make the Chargers great again. FTR. Okay. Love you. Bye. It's 180. Kevin's on his 180. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking, I mean, it's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. He just woke up. It's 2 a.m. In, in the East Coast time. I'm getting up in five hours to go. <laughs> to go party. To get heat stroke again and come back here and fall asleep early. Okay. I can't do any goddamn math. Deeps. <laughs> And I never was good at it to begin with. Why, why are we trying to call me out? He went to camp, deeps. He went to camp, not math camp. You're getting Dream real camp. deeps on my shit list, deeps. Movie camp. And I don't know if he's certified fresh. He says it's uh, haven't talked to you in a while, so maybe really, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe it's a different name. name. Maybe a different I don't name. know. It's, it's but, uh, Jeebs. Yeah, if it's Jeebs, oh boy. <laughs> Jeebs, don't oh, go shit. switching names if the that's e you. Silent. I can't tell if it's you or not, but uh, all right. So the first question, do you think uh, we don't have enough tough players on this team? I feel like I we think, do. I feel like we do. I don't. I feel like I saw a lot of hard hits in that game, especially on the defensive side. And I saw a lot of, you know, talking about like Gerald yeah. Everett, like he, shedding tackles and, and chugging hard. I mean, I, I'm not going to say every one of them is a dog, but I feel like we have quite a few. We're not giving team. up. I feel like the last two years when we give up 150 yards a game on defense, you could say we're not tough. 
big plays is like that's mental. That maybe we have a stupid team, <laughs> but I don't think <laughs> I don't think I don't think our big plays that we give up is a lack of toughness. <laughs> like I've coached some dumb teams where it's just like <laughs> I I told you the play. Like I, I just knew don't what have the answer. I don't have any. I told to you what was gonna happen, and you're just dumb. <laughs> I've had that before. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe we're just dumb. <sighs> but I don't think what you look at it points to us not being tough. I mean, Derwin's getting personal foul penalties for hitting people too hard. And right. Maybe Kenneth, they just need some Sebastian calculators. Joseph Day knocked out their running back for most of the game. And right. Kenneth Murray is laying the wood on the goal line. So I don't think it's a lack of toughness. Just here, Taylor almost knocked himself out of this last game. Right. Um, so it's not, I don't think it's a lack of toughness. I think it's a lack of wisdom. Football IQ. <laughs> Calculators. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So 15 times 12 stuff. Yeah. 180. <laughs> All right. And then uh, if you came across a device which lets you talk to everyone in the world but has a lifespan of 30 seconds, what are you telling the world? I answered the first one, so you guys have to answer this one. Uh, Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. <laughs> no, <you said. laughs> Everyone. Patreon.com like, slash Charger Chat. FTR, 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 FTR. <laughs> we're just looking for one. We're one percenter on that whole. If we can get one percent of that oh, back. Oh, God. One <laughs> percent of the whole world. I'm buying a section for everyone. I'm buying the whole stadium out, okay? <laughs> Charger Raiders week style. will be all blue. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And I'll hire security to escort people out who are wearing security. Raiders stuff. Security. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, out of here. If tickets get yeah, pirated and moved to the Raiders, yeah. they're just going to be escorted out. Yeah. I'm going to walk you out. Oh, God. That gave me a headache from that so hard. <laughs> Woo. A Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> the most <laughs> ultimate shameless plug in the whole world <laughs> the entire planet Ooh. that's all I could come up with I'm sure there's a lot better things I could say that's Justin all. Herbert if you can hear me <laughs> I love you so much oh you get a direct line to Justin that's easy you do. But every, yeah, everyone, everybody. Gets to, but everyone everyone gets, gets to, to hear what you Justin say Justin Herbert I love you so much Philip Rivers I love you so much Keenan Allen I love you so much <laughs> You pull a canine That's and just go, so I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Love you. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> if you could have that device, folks, what would you say? Put it down in the comments. Uh, Deeps, I hope we did your your answer or your question right. Thank you for I'll asking work on it. My, I'll work on my math for you next time I see your Next name. time, Deeps, we'll be ready. It's uh, not going to be any you. better, but I'll work on it. Hey, work you will be put in. You don't have to be in. good at math. You have a calculator on your phone. It's fine. Hey, Siri. Shake it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should have you interrupted math. your whole thing and just said, hey, Siri. <laughs> it's 15 times 12. There's your answer. <laughs> All right. Deeps, thank you for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking questions and Ask Well Fam. Uh, it's so much better on a victory Monday to have these questions. Guys, I'm laughing. I, I have a headache. You. I love you all. I love you. I love you. I, love you. I, I love feel you. like I had I to defend the Chargers the whole time. It was just fun. It was just fun. Talking bolts. I need some ibuprofen. But uh, I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Uh, any final thoughts there, gentlemen? I love you. I have one. I love you. Arm sleeves are aesthetic. Arm sleeves are practical after a scrapey. Aesthetic. Scrape Put it down in the comments, folks. Aesthetic or practical? Let Why us would know. he pull it out out of absolutely nowhere, Kyle? I'm looking at the I camera. Don't I hope know. you can see my eyes. I'm not know. looking to you on the screen. I'm looking to you at the camera. Honestly, I forgot about the arm scrape when he showed up with the arm sleeve, but doesn't they don't you don't put a sleeve on for a scrape? That's the softest thing in the whole world. If he really put that on because he had a little bit of a turf burn, that's Wait. so soft, dude. How <laughs> fucking dare you talk bad on him? Right that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Get us folks. out of here. Don't Boy forget to bolt us up because we're ready for any spot, any place. Give us a K Love You Bye, Kevin, in that voice. K Love You Bye. K Love You Bye. K Love You Bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Do you want to smell like a fresh wind, a winner with long, flowing blonde hair, and a smile that will melt hearts with its smallest movement? Then you have to try BTFU's new Herbert Air Freshener, 
Essence des Herbes. While you're at it, try our new Ascent Bit of Bash that mixes cinnamon, turmeric, and a large helping of f***em. And you can't forget about Douse of Dicker to give you that big dicker energy you've been missing. So when you're ready to BTFU, reach for BTFU and smell your best today.